All right, guys, so this next two weeks you're going to do a project online, and it's going to, you're going to have two weeks to do it, but that doesn't mean you just screw around and wait till the two weeks are up and throw it together at the end. You're going to have checklists that you have to go through, like you're going to have to watch two Ed puzzles or one Ed puzzle. I, you'll see when I post it. But um, you're going to create a slideshow, which is just researching a past pandemic. You'll choose one pandemic, and you'll you'll follow a checklist of stuff, which I'll show you more. So on slide two, you'll see that you're going to choose one pandemic for your project. You may even imagine your own pandemic, like make one up. However, your creation must maintain all of the characteristics of a pandemic. So you'll see here I gave you a list of all the past pandemics that we've been through, Spanish flu, Asian flu, tuberculosis, things like that. Then you'll have things that were um, epidemics but could have turned into pandemics like SARS, Ebola, etc. You can even create your own. And then lastly, you can do this research project over coronavirus. You'll see that I said, gave you a checklist of seven things that you have to complete. One, one of these things in bold, each one of them should have their own slide. So you're going to complete all of them on a separate slide. And you'll see I've already made the slides for you. The first one was pandemic death and dates, symptoms and causes, etc., etc. So You'll symptoms and causes. You'll say, okay, this is a slide I do symptoms and causes. You'll go back to slide three for the checklist, and you'll see I'm supposed to explain the symptoms and causes for the pan one pandemic that I chose in great detail and use a heading for the se section, right? For pandemic dates and death toll, you're going to put the name of your pandemic and the years it was most problematic somewhere the reader will notice it, right? Like it's a title page, right? You need to tell me the number of people who were affected, right? How many people were infected, how many people died, whatever. And make sure that your title is creatively displayed and original. You see, if you go up here to format, or I'm sorry, insert, you can do pictures from the web, from your computer, from your drive, by website. You can take pictures, you can or insert text, sound, video, shapes, word art, all kinds of things to make your project look nice. Um, prevention, treatment, and cure slide. You're going to explain how people prevented, treated, and cured the pandemics in three separate sections. Use a heading for each section, right? So you put all three of these in three different text boxes in creative ways, or you can make three separate slides. I don't care. You can add slides to make those to cover those three things. Um, spreading communication. Explain how the disease traveled from country to country and how people communicated their concerns about the disease. You can talk about in the next slide. You'll talk about society's reactions. You'll find two notable quotes or excerpts that tell us how people responded during the time period, right? And so that's a one slide that's talking about society's reactions. The next one is visual images. You'll use three insightful visual images. You'll probably just do all computer ones, not drawn or cut from magazines. This was back when we did it on paper. These pictures need to inform your viewer on the topic, right? Three pictures that really encompass what um, your pandemic, what times were like during your pandemic. Um, this goes for your whole project. Make sure it's colorful. Make sure your project is visually pleasing. Make sure your sentences are complete, etc. The last slide will be a question that you are going to ask, a higher level question, not just a basic one that you already know the answer to. And you're going to answer your own question thoroughly. To be successful on this project, you need to follow all the directions in slide three. You need to choose one pandemic from slide two. Use creating, creative heading and titles. That can be making these different. Um, you could, that can be making your pages look nice, right, with color and word art or whatever magic stuff that you guys know. Um, you didn't just copy and paste because if you copy and paste, you will fail this assignment. You need to be putting it in your own words, not just summarizing and copying and pasting. You're going to do well when you cite your websites. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then you'll also do well when you fill the entire page for each one of these slides with the information required and that you're creative when you do it. OK, just because it says you can't use only use three images doesn't mean every slide can't use some sort of image for context. OK, like I said, I already gave you the seven slides you need to fill here. Let's talk about Works Cited. So this is the Works Cited page that tells you how to do it. You're going to click on this link. And it'll take here. Okay. Okay. 
throw away and drive them. And so, as we react, you know, uh, copies, website, and search bar, it runs slow when I record my screen, so I apologize. You'll search it. You'll search the website. I might have twice because I can't. Yeah, it's a because of the recording. It'll create a digital citation. It's like, hey, here's the title. Here's the day it was published. Here's the person who wrote it, the year, etc. And you'll make sure all that's correct. And then you'll create the citation. And then it'll give you this MLA way that you cite sources so that you're not stealing information, right? We cite sources because... You didn't write, make this information or research it yourself. You got it from someone else. And the way you prove that is by citing your sources. You're also supposed to do in-text, but we're not going to work or worry about in-text citations. So you'll copy all the websites that you use here, and you'll put them in that little search bar. It'll work better for you when you're not screen recording like I am now. And then you'll copy and paste the websites that you did, that you work cited, that they give you at the end of that free bibliography generator here. And then um, you need to make sure that when you paste them here, they are in alphabetical order. And typically you have to do a hanging indent here, but I'm not going to require you to do that because I don't have time to teach you. Okay, so make sure you're putting all your websites in here and using this link. And then you're getting a, a work cited from it and that you're copying and pasting it in alphabetical or order here. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, this week, you're going to have to watch this video and answer the questions in Edpuzzle, watch the works cited as Edpuzzle, and then you're going to also have to um, finish three of the four slides. Good luck.